on uh, uh, application development uh, and uh, all the topics that uh, uh, surround the data platform uh, will be will be taken into account so not only SQL server but the entire data platform so we will speak about also NoSQL stuff or extension to SQL like the session we are going to have today you can uh, find yeah, these slides you can find in uh, in uh, these slides uh, all my uh, contact information and uh, contact information of the user group. Uh, of course, if you don't know what PASS is, uh, my advice is to take advantage of this uh, chance to connect with PASS. Uh, is the Professional Association of SQL Server User, where well, actually this was the former name. Now it's just PASS and that's it. Uh, and it's a organi no-profit organization that uh, tries to uh, provide free resources uh, and events um, uh, to everyone is working on the Microsoft Data Platform, so this is the website where you can get more information about it and uh, decide to register. Uh, PASS uh, provides uh, and supports also for a lot of user groups, uh, both online and offline. We are online user group, a virtual user group as they named. Uh, as you can see, there are several additional user groups, so we are the development one, but there are user groups for almost everything. So you have for data architecture, uh, for database administration, in memory, so top uh, technological um, user group, or you even have a language user group, which uh, uh, take care of all the topics just in one specific language. So you have Spanish, Russian, Italian, French, uh, so it's maybe it's easier for you to follow them. And last but not least, uh, the next meetings, uh, before talking of the, uh, the meeting we are going to have today. So next, uh, uh, by the end of this month, we are going to have uh, uh, Danny Lee presenting on Azure Cosmos DB, that was formerly known as Document DB, so a NoSQL database, very interesting topic. Uh, and on July, we, have, uh, we will have Itzik Bengan, a good friend of mine, that um, We'll, uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, an amazing function that uh, uh, lies within SQL Server and it is uh, the T-SQL windowing function. Uh, it's very powerful, very useful for the developers, so it's going to be another great, uh, uh, great event. Just like today, we are going to have a really, really interesting meeting about uh, uh, graph processing on SQL Server 2017 and, uh, of course, Azure SQL Database. And that will be presented by Shreya Verma and Arvin Shamsundar. Hopefully, I spelled the name correctly. If not, I apologize. And uh, and I'm sure this is going to be great because uh, graph is really an interesting topic, graph processing. And now the fact that we can now have it inside SQL Server really open uh, a lot of possibilities. Uh, and also it makes uh, graph processing much, much easier because we'll, we will have it integrated with all the nice features that uh, SQL already has. So it's going to be a really killer feature for application development. So that's why I asked them um, to present uh, to our, our user group. So it's now time for me to handle uh, uh, mouse to them, and I'm going to it uh, right now. Here you go, and welcome uh, to both, Shreya and Arvin. Really welcome, uh, and really thanks for uh, presenting to our user group. Thank you, David, and uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to this group. Uh, my name is Shreya Verma. I'm a program manager and feature owner for Graph. Uh, uh, SQL Graph at uh, SQL Server at Microsoft. And with me, I have Arvind. Hi, uh, I'm Arvind Shamsundar. I work with the SQL Customer Advisory Team. Uh, you probably know us as SQL Cat. And uh, I've been working with early adopters of this feature uh, along with Shreya. So we're very eager to share with you uh, overview of the feature. We'll show you a little demo. And uh, hopefully, we get you excited about the possibilities that uh, uh, Graph Data Processing uh, uh, now will enable. Uh, just a quick audio check, uh, David. We are hopefully audible and clear. Hello, can you guys hear us? Absolutely. Okay, okay. cool. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. wanted to make sure we are all good. All right. So with that, uh, Shreya will uh, walk you through the basics, and then we will get into some uh, more advanced uh, uh, use cases. We'll show you a little demo and uh, get uh, further into the details. Yeah. So uh, before I begin with uh, what uh, the SQL Graph is or what the new features are, I just want to quickly uh, showcase some of the scenarios where we saw people 
turning towards graph databases and why they wanted to use this new technology over relational, which is or NoSQL, which is available for years in the market. Um, so we saw that uh, people have uh, hierarchical uh, data generally in their applications, like your HR data or even your bill of materials kind of manufacturing data. They, uh, they are hierarchical in nature. And uh, while it is very easy to represent the hierarchy using hierarchy ID data type, and you can have a good tree kind of structure, it's not always very easy to um, to show, to to demonstrate or represent connections between the nodes at the same level in that hierarchy, or to have multiple parents of a given uh, given node in, in the hierarchy or a given entity in the hierarchy. And uh, other thing was that people had complex connections in their schema. Uh, it's, it was not just uh, foreign keys, which are one to many, but they had many to many kind of relationships. And uh, while well, people could use a junction table in between uh, those uh, in, in, to represent these many to many relationships, uh, when it write, came to writing down queries, it was not very easy to write these queries. They would get very complex very easily, uh, blow up into multiple joins, and then if you have more connections coming up, or if your schema is evolving, and you have more and new different type of connections, it's not very easy to extend the schema and not very easy to extend the queries that you have. So maintenance of the application also becomes very difficult. And <clears throat> we saw that uh, customers found graph databases very useful to you know materialize information from existing facts. For example, in this uh, on the slide, you can see that it A works for organization O and A manages B. I can directly conclude from here that B also works for organization O. So to to link or to materialize information very naturally, it was easy with, with, with a, a graph kind of structure or graph databases. So uh, we heard from customers about these complaints and we decided that we'll build something within the SQL Server engine to support these type of queries and these type of uh, scenarios. So, <clears throat> yeah, next slide. So, uh, SQL Graph is, uh, is an extension to SQL Server Engine. Now we support creating graph database, uh, graph database structure or graph database schema in, in, in the database. Uh, there could be one graph for a database, and a graph is nothing but a collection of nodes and edges, nodes that represent your entities and edges that represent your relationships. Uh, we store them in the form of tables in the database, so, uh, and edges, with the help of edge tables, now you can easily model many to many relationships in your schema. Uh, users can uh, query these graph their graph schema using uh, query language extensions that we have. We have extended T-SQL. I'll walk you through that over the next few slides. And then this comes with entire tooling and ecosystem that you get with SQL Server today. So all the tools that you are used to using the query language are backup and restore, import and export, things like that will just work out of the box for you with the new type of schema and tables. So when I said that you can create graph objects now, that means you can create your node and edge tables. <coughs> and uh, there could be properties associated with both node and edge tables. Uh, on the screen you can see, on the slide you can see that uh, now we have extended the create table syntax to create a table as a node or as an edge. Uh, an edge table may or may not have any user-defined attributes associated to it. So whenever you create a node table in SQL, uh, SQL Server, we create one implicit column, uh, node ID, $node underscore ID for you, which is a unique identifier for that node in the entire database. And when you create an edge table, we create three implicit columns. Uh, one is $edge underscore ID, which is again unique identifier for the edge, and uh, $from ID and to ID, which define the nodes uh, that this edge connects, basically. We'll see that in the demo, yeah. yeah, we'll see that later in the demo. But uh, one point to note here is that when you create an edge table, you don't specify the types of nodes this edge is going to connect. Uh, only when you try, uh, when you start inserting data into the edge table, you define at that time which nodes this a particular edge is going to connect. Exactly. So, and that goes back to the point you made earlier about 
there is one graph yeah. per database. Yeah, there's one graph per database. And uh, we support creating any type of indexes on these node and edge tables, including the column store indexes. So clustered column store, non-clustered column store, all type of indexes are supported on this schema. So depending on the type of your application, if it is more analytical, you can have column store indexes on it. Or if it is more of OLTP type, then you can just have your own store uh, binary uh, entry indexes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then there are some query language extensions to make pattern matching and uh, um, multi-hop navigation or multi-hop traverses to the graph easier. Um, we have introduced a new built-in which is called match. If you know Cypher then you may, might be familiar with uh, the match syntax. It's not exactly like that. However, it, uh, you might find it similar to that. And uh, the way uh, we traverse the graph is if you see it the match syntax, then this match in, in the match, we go from one node to another node via an edge. So anything inside the parenthesis is an edge and anything at the end of the uh, two ends of the arrow is a node. So in this, basically, I'm trying to find all the people who report to me in my organization's Seattle location. Uh, so I just say that find me people who I manage who work at location and that location is Seattle. Okay. Uh, so you can use filters. Uh, just the way you use on regular tables in this uh, in the select query, you can use any other constructs or any other functions that are that uh, like average the aggregate functions or you know group by or uh, other built-ins that you are uh, that you use uh, with regular tables. They can be used on node and edge tables too. And uh, along with that, there's this new match built-in. Uh, match, however, only works on node and edge tables today. It does not work on regular relational tables. Uh, you can also join node and edge tables with your relational table. So uh, SQL Graph gives you the capabilities to query across your data, uh, your relational and your graph data at the same time. So in this case, WorkSat is also um, a node table. Right? WorkSat is an edge table. An edge table, edge table. Right? So yeah. that, that shows the relationship. Yeah. Uh, the new features are the SQL Graph extensions are completely uh, integrated inside the SQL Server engine. So we use the same query processor, same metadata, same storage, everything is same. Um, if you download and install SQL Server 2017, you will just get the C CTP2 and above. You will just get the new features with that. Um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, your queries can now look up against your graph and relational data at the same time. You can join these two type of tables together for analysis and uh, uh, it just gives you, you can just do a lot of powerful things with this. Um, you also get uh, other advanced features like column store and advanced analytics using R uh, or Python now and HA. Uh, with SQL Graph, um, since you use it with SQL Server and it's integrated in SQL Engine, you just get all these uh, out of the box. Um, all the security and compliance features like data masking and um, you know role level security, everything is just supported out of the box right. on this. So I guess the point we are trying to make here is the fact that when you are uh, comfortable with using SQL as your uh, store for data and you want to uh, extend the model to have uh, more complex modeling around like a graph and so on you could leverage a feature like this to, yes to, uh, yes yeah so if you have evolving needs or your application is evolving and you now have a need for a new kind of uh, data store yeah. you don't have to go to a different product yeah. uh, for that you can just leverage sql servers new capabilities and your data can stay at the same Correct. place and uh, no etl nothing yeah. You, I guess this is that. feedback we've had from uh, early adopters of the feature yes. as well, wherein yeah. they were very interested in adopting uh, SQL Graph or Graph Data Processing in SQL simply because of the fact that they did not want to export the data out to a third party graph database, for example. Yes. And uh, they could get all the other goodness that yeah. was with SQL already. Yeah, and they could use the same language that they know. They didn't have to learn sure. a new sure. language altogether from this. Uh, you get the tooling and ecosystem, so existing tools like SSMS, backup and restore, import and export, everything will just work. Uh, like I mentioned, dynamic data masking, role level security will, will work too. And this is also available on Linux. Yeah, yeah. So if you have <laughs> CDP 2.0 or 2.1, yeah. uh, you, you have this for free, even on Linux. Yes. 
Yeah. And does it work across editions? Like, do we have it in Enterprise Standard and, uh, for example, Express? Yes, yes, it is available on all the editions. Okay. And all the SKUs are now uh, Azure. Azure SQL DB. Yeah. So, with, uh, yeah. Yeah, with that, I'll just hand it over to cool. Arvind sure. for a quick demo. Yeah. So, this is a little walkthrough that we're going to do uh, around using these features, which is uh, the ability to define a graph comprised of nodes and edges and uh, query that graph using T SQL syntax. And the end goal here is to accomplish uh, uh, or to implement a recommendation system. We are all familiar with recommendation systems. Uh, if you have ever used an online shopping site, for example, uh, you know exactly what we mean. Wherein, when you buy a product or a, or a service, you are recommended that you may also be interested in these other services or products. So, uh, to make this more uh, fun for our little walkthrough, we are going to pretend that we are in the business of uh, uh, we we run a online audio uh, or a radio station, let's say. And uh, to make it reasonably realistic, we are using a public domain data set, which is uh, something called the million song data set. Uh, this is fairly well-known data set. It's uh, very popular with uh, machine learning and uh, uh, other use cases, such as recommendation services. Uh, the, the song data set, the million song data set, as the name implies, uh, has a million songs uh, in its repository. Uh, what is more interesting is we extended uh, the use case to include user preference data. So there was a related uh, data set made available by a website called the Echo Nest. And uh, if you go to these URLs where uh, the original authors have posted uh, details about these two data sets, you will understand that the Echo Nest data set is a set of user listening profiles. So, for example, if I listen to n number of songs, uh, the Echo Nest dataset captures the details of which songs I listen to. All of this data, of course, is anonymized, so there's no personal data in there. And uh, as, as we mentioned, it has been in the public domain for, uh, for a while. Uh, so if you want to know more about the dataset, uh, there are a couple of links out here. Uh, and uh, we will make this uh, deck available for your reference uh, shortly after the uh, meeting is over. So that's kind of the background in terms of what we are trying to use here. Now, um, in terms of how we would want to implement uh, this uh, requirement. Uh, so again, recall that we're pretending to be an online radio station and most of our data is in SQL. Let's say we want to extend it to now uh, start recommending songs. And uh, the way we're going to do it is to use a very simple uh, but effective algorithm, which is uh, in the recommendation services uh, world, it's something which we call a collaborative filtering approach. Now, uh, the approach is greatly simplified here, of course, for our demo. Uh, but uh, the basic idea is that when you know which users have listened to a set of songs, you could use the knowledge that other users who listen to the same song uh, might also, uh, or the songs that they in turn listen to, might be of interest to you. So let's walk through this. Uh, for the uh, for the explanation of the algorithm, I'm going to pretend that I'm user one. Now I'm currently listening to a song called song two. Uh, the way this algorithm uh, works is we're going to look for other users that listen to song two, and then we're going to extend the search to other songs that the other two users listen to. So in this case, as you can see with the blue line, uh, it so happens that uh, both user three and user four listen to song two. That's the green line uh, that you initially see. And then we look at the other song which they listen to, which is song three. So we could then recommend, and that's going to be the kind of the product uh, of our uh, algorithm, which is the uh, dark purple line, if you may, which is the output of the recommendation mm -hmm. query. It says user one, you might also want to listen to song three. So very simple algorithm, but quite effective. And uh, in the real world, this forms the basis for uh, a lot of real world recommendation services. Of course, you may add additional filters on top of this, such as the genre of the music or uh, the language in which the song is uh, sung and so on and so forth. Uh, for the purposes of our demo, we're just going to use the graph and uh, implement uh, our search based on the graph itself. So with that, let's take a look at um, how we might model this in SQL. 
Um, now, for the demo, and when you look at it in the actual demo, you will uh, realize some of the specifics that we're talking about. Uh, we, uh, we recall from the data set that we have, we have users, we have their listening profiles, and we have songs. So we would now want to model those as entities and relationships, or in more precise terms, as nodes and edges in our graph. So the first thing we will do is model the users in the system, as uh, in this case, we have a table called unique user. Uh, and that takes uh, or that stores uh, the unique user ID, which is an anonymized user ID for each user in the system. We then also start tracking the songs which we are aware of. So these are the million songs that we are aware of, and they are in turn stored in a so-called node table. Uh, this node table and the previous one, which is the unique user table, uh, all have attributes. And these attributes are uh, the song ID, in this case, uh, the name of the song or the title of the song, and the artist who sang that song or performed that song, if it was an instrumental song. So uh, these are attributes on top of the internal node ID column that Shreya referred to. And again, when you see the demo in action, you will actually see how that is uh, materialized. Uh, and the last piece of the graph, uh, the, the model that we have, is the relationship itself. So in this case, uh, we are going to model a relationship called likes, and that's modeled as an edge table. The edge table in this case takes an additional attribute, which is the listen count attribute. So think of this as the number of times that I listen to a specific song that's represented as an int or a big int in this case in the uh, table. Uh, it's useful to keep in mind that the edge table may not have any such attributes. It may just be a relationship implicitly connecting uh, two nodes in the graph, but more realistically than not, you will tend to have um, uh, you will tend to have attributes in the uh, uh, in the edge table. In this case, again, it's just an integer. All right. So with that little background, let's take a look at uh, how it all fits together in uh, SQL itself. Um, I'll take you through the data first that we have at our uh, disposal. So uh, for convenience, in this demo, we have already imported the data uh, into SQL that's in a relational structure. There is no graph structure to the data as yet. Uh, just uh, uh, pretend that we are starting from scratch. And let's take a look at what we have available first. So this is the, uh, the we've taken a top 50 snapshot. Uh, you will see the first set of data is the user preference data or the user uh, listening history data, if you may. Uh, in the data set, they call it user taste profile. So. It's basically a mapping of which user listened to which song and how many times did they listen to that song. So in this case, you'll see a lot of distinct users happen to listen to a particular song. So that's just a, a snippet of the data. In addition, you also have the song metadata themselves. So uh, down below, you have the song ID, which is something which we are going to use in our uh, actual queries, uh, who performed that song and the name of the song. So uh, this is going to be the basis of our uh, uh, whole uh, algorithm. Now, recall again, this is just relational data. So this is nothing but a CSV file imported into SQL Server. So no magic. Uh, there's no graph, uh, uh, you know, attributes to this as yet. So the next step you would want to do is, uh, you know, convert or kind of uh, graphize this data, if you may. <laughs> to do that, we, of course, have created the tables. Uh, now, for the, for the demo, again, we've uh, kind of done this ahead of time. Uh, to save on a uh, little bit of time. But uh, imagine that you would create these tables in the same database. Uh, these tables have to be distinct from the existing data that we already have. And this is one of the, uh, you know, if you may, the current implementation does not allow you to convert a table in place mm -hmm. to a node or an edge okay. table. Yeah. Uh, so we've had feedback from some customers where they would have uh, ideally liked to see the ability to do an alter table, for example, of an existing table and make it a node or an edge. Uh, that feature doesn't exist in our current implementation, but uh, we've taken that feedback and we're looking at uh, you know, ways of doing that in the future. Yes. All right, so we've got a node table and we have existing data for that table in the relational, uh, the, the, the old uh, 
the data resides in the CSV format, which we then imported into a Unix uh, Unix tracks uh, uh, table. So we we will then proceed to populate the graph version of the table, if you may, which is a which is again a node table. The node table is populated by using an insert and a select. Uh, given the fact that we don't have a way to uh, alter the existing table in place, we have to use an insert and select. Now, for reasons of time, we have already populated the data. Uh, it, it doesn't take too long. Uh, the insert took around a minute and a half or so on my uh, laptop here. And that's a million rows uh, worth of uh, data. Similarly, we populated the unique user table which is uh, again derived from the uh, existing data that we have, which is kind of like the CSV file imported into the train triplets table, and then we're gonna import them into this uh, node table. So, uh, so far you're not really seeing any graph specific uh, 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 attributes, which is one of the important value props, which is the fact that if you're working with T-SQL, you will not find this to be hugely different other than the as node clause, which we added to the table uh, definition itself. Uh, again, for reasons of time, we have already imported the users and uh, we'll show you how that looks. Uh, this is where it gets interesting. We have two tables set up now, which are the graph equivalents of what they were earlier, which is the users and the songs. Now we've got to express the relationships between these users, which listen to specific songs. Uh, again, from the slide, you probably recall uh, that we declared a table called uh, likes table and we uh, said that this is the edge table and uh, you also probably recall that we had an attribute on top of that table which is nothing but another column in the table uh, which is the listen count uh, attribute. Now populating edge uh, tables if you may uh, is where you first start seeing some of these internal uh, node IDs that Shreya referred to earlier. So the way we are doing this is again an insert select and in order to express the from and to uh, we are using the node ID values. These are internal values set up and you'll see that in a minute um, for the users in the system uh, and the songs in the system. And in order to do this, this is a one time migration, right? We're migrating uh, or converting data from the current structure to the graph structure. So in order to do that, we need to do this uh, join between uh, the, uh, the, the users and the songs in order to get their node IDs. And they go into internal columns in the edge table, which are called from ID and to ID. Now let's actually take a look at the final product of this uh, data conversion process, if you may. So uh, let's query the unique user table first. Now, uh, the column on the right is exactly what you saw earlier in the previous, uh, the traditional table structure, which is the user ID. This is the data that came in from the public domain data set. What's on the left, however, is this new internal column, which is called the node ID column. Uh, the node ID has a suffix, which is unique for each table. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, large number that you see appended to node ID. Uh, building blocks of the node ID are the fact that it is a node, the fact that it is on this table. So you see it's on dbo.unique user and you see a little running integer value, which is kind of like almost an identity column for that uh, uh, node ID. Um, so this whole representation, which is like JSON representation is uh, for the human user to visualize uh, the node ID in a bit of an easier uh, fashion. Internally, it's of course stored in a more optimal uh, uh, way. It's not really yeah. stored as a JSON fragment out there. Yeah. All right. Now let's take a look at the song table, the unique song table. The unique song table has the same attributes that we had in the, uh, the previous version of the table, which is the song ID, which is a unique identifier text, uh, you know, alphanumeric ID for the song, the name of the song and the artist who performed that song. Again, because this is a node table, we have a node ID column for that table. Now, um, you can reference this column, by the way, as dollar node ID. You do not need to use the whole, uh, uh, the, the expanded version with the suffix. The, the suffix is uh, also allowed, but you 
can just use dollar node ID the way that we have uh, in this little script here. So anyway, that was just a minor uh, detail. So again, the node ID you should be familiar by now. There's a the fact that it's a node, the fact that it's on this table which is dbo dot unique song, and again you see that running identity type uh, number that you have, and all of this is made uh, uh, conveniently readable in this JSON uh, representation. Now comes the last table, which is the relationship table, if you may, which is the likes uh, table in our case. So as Shreya mentioned earlier, there are more columns here. Uh, there is, of course, um, an edge ID, which he referred to earlier. The edge ID, similar to the node IDs that we saw in node tables, is the unique way of uh, tracking every uh, edge in the table. So. If you look at the JSON fragment here, it says it's an edge. It's on dbo.likes, and again, you have a running number to track the edge. Uh, the the thing that we did earlier in the insert, you, you see the node IDs that we took, uh, those internally got transformed into from and to. So if you go back to the insert statement that was used to convert the existing data into the edge table, uh, the from ID is nothing but the node ID for a given user in the unique user table. And similarly, the two ID that you have on the right is the node ID for a unique song from the unique song table. So hopefully these are, uh, you know, you getting familiar with the representation that we have for node IDs and edge IDs. And then the last column in the likes table is the attribute that we refer to, which is the listen count. In this case, it's the number of times that a particular user look uh, or uh, listen to a particular song. Right. So uh, I'm going to pause here to see if there are any questions which we can answer uh, uh, verbally. Um, otherwise, uh, we will take a look at the next part of the demo in a minute. Yeah, I have been answering questions okay. for chat here. All right. So there, there was a question about, uh, is it possible to trend line how one user likes a particular song over time using this technique? Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that we do not currently support temporal feature on node and edge tables in, in the graph, but uh, in this release. But if you are inserting your data as a new record every yeah. time, yeah. then you can certainly run a query Correct. on Correct. that. So we could simulate yeah. a, a timeline of yeah. sorts by recording uh, multiple rows for the same uh, user preference. So, so, yeah. All right, and then there is a question: When new songs or users are added mm -hmm. to the source tables, do you have to update the nodes and edges edge tables afterwards? Uh, and so, yeah. new songs and new users are just like an insert into uh, into that. the edge uh, into the node and the edge tables yeah. respectively. Yeah. Uh, if the user already existed, mm -hmm. uh, correct. You now have a new insert into a unique user. Yeah. But if you had new songs, they would directly go into unique uh, song. So uh, for I think what would be very uh, easy to understand is imagine at the end of this particular data migration or data conversion step, imagine that we were to drop the original tables or uh, rename them so that they don't get used. Uh, th that is what you would do in a real world application. The reason we walked you through a typical use case of existing data and then converting data is because this is very popular with customers. They have existing data. They want to build a graph on top of it. So what we just demonstrated here is kind of a conversion process. At the end of the conversion process, you would proceed to drop or uh, rename original tables and your application would continue inserting into the new node and edge tables respectively. So I uh, hope that clarifies uh, uh, the real world situation. Yeah, and then there is a question, can you create triggers on nodes, node and edge tables? So yeah, it, it is possible to create triggers. On yeah. node and edge tables. And uh, if you just wanted to get the, uh, so when you insert a new node, you get a node ID column auto populated essentially. And that can also be captured using the output clause. So yeah. if that was the reason you asked for uh, the trigger, uh, there are the output clause is also supported, uh, just for the record, in case you wanted to use output um, uh, instead of having a trigger out there. Cool. So uh, we'll we'll take uh, more questions uh, a little later. Uh, let's come back to our original requirement, which is this whole recommendation uh, requirement. So um, just to have some fun again, we're going to pretend that uh, I like uh, Lady Gaga's songs. 
and uh, hopefully you know lady gaga is i'm sure uh, you've all heard the name very popular artist uh, and she had this song uh, which was a hit uh, on the charts uh, and it was called just dance now the reason we are using songs which are quite old is because the data set itself is a little old it's uh, something which was released in the year uh, 2011 thereabouts so at that point in time uh, it so happened that this popular song was uh, something uh, we are going to pretend that the, uh, the user was listening to the song and we want to be recommended songs which are similar to that song um, for this simple recommendation system, we are going to use the graph uh, capability that we uh, just talked about. And we're going to prioritize the top 10 songs based on, uh, for, for you know, lack of more complex algorithms, we're just going to, uh, uh, you know, kind of count how many times uh, did we see a particular song being listened to by other users. And uh, the query that you see here, which is doing all of this logic, um, has a central point, which I'll just zoom in for convenience, which is the match clause. So this is an interesting use case. So uh, pretend that we are putting the user at the center of this. So you have you, which is on, uh, which is at the center of this uh, expression. And the you user is listening to a particular song. So that's what we have on the right hand side of this expression, which is the fact that uh, user is currently listening to some song. Now you also notice that we have a filter on top, which is the where clause saying, I'm only interested in users who are listening to just dance. So that's the my song uh, filter, uh, which is on top. The second part, which is really the, the recommendation logic uh, in this demo comes from what's on the left, which is uh, you see the similar song, which is on the left side of the uh, of the expression, we, we, we're going to find songs which were liked by um, users who also listen to Just Dance. Yeah. So this is a little bit of uh, a new syntax. If you're not familiar with uh, syntax like Cypher, which uh, uh, Shaya mentioned earlier, which is quite well known in the uh, world of graph databases. But if you're, you know, if you look at it, it's not too complex. So the the key building blocks are the fact that you have arrows uh, to represent uh, the fact that you're looking at a relationship and in this particular case the stuff that is in parentheses uh, or brackets is actually the edge through yes. which you're looking for a relationship yes right? so uh, this syntax has a name as the ascii art uh, is, is what people refer to it but um, uh, you know if you if you've looked at graph databases in the past you'll probably be very familiar with this if you have not it's not too difficult to visualize uh, how uh, uh, powerful and at the same time how elegant uh, this capability is right so we have more complex examples of that uh, coming up a little later not on this demo but uh, another related demo but um, for now, the uh, other thing I, I did want to point out is uh, because we're doing uh, an aggregate type of a query. So this is a query which is more of a rela uh, relational data warehouse or a OLAP type query, even though it's not really OLAP. Uh, and therein comes the power of column store. So behind the scenes, what we've done in preparation for this demo is we ended up um, creating additional indexes. So all of the tables that you just saw uh, are actually clustered column store uh, index uh, tables, if you may. And um, uh, the power that column store gives you is the uh, capability of doing very efficient aggregation because of the batch mode operators that come along when you use column store. All right, so um, this is a fairly uh, intense query. It's going to look at a graph which has a million nodes for the users it has another million rows or million nodes for songs. And in between the total number of relationships between these two are 48 million. So the data set is fairly, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a non-trivial uh, data set. And we're actually going to do a group by on top of all of that. So uh, the, the great thing about the graph implementation is that uh, because we had column store support uh, queries which are of this type actually run very, very quickly. And um, you see it's run in less than a second. If you uh, looked at the statistics time, which we, uh, uh, we can enable that and take a look, you'll actually see that it's uh, running in less than uh, 300 to 400 milliseconds. So it's a very, very um, 
powerful capability and uh, again if you go back down in this case it took less than half, or close to half a second uh, again you see cpu time is high that means it used parallelism so there's a lot of good stuff that you inherit for free when you use graph with uh, on a sql server so if you want to take a look at the plan uh, you will notice that we have parallelism uh, in the operators uh, out here and again the most important thing is that because we use it, we are able to use column store uh, we get batch mode execution for free so all of this is uh, uh, some of the key value prop behind uh, graph inside sql server yeah. because this is kind of the core question that we get from customers saying why would i use this over uh, let's say a dedicated third party database right. and the fact is that your data is already in sql and you want to use a lot of the other query processing goodness and optimizations that we have with sql yeah all right so uh, with that i want to take a pause and we'll uh, see if there's any other questions we need to answer uh, yeah. otherwise uh, so the, uh, i have been again answering but okay. there was one question that probably you would like to answer. okay okay <laughs> somebody asked um, uh, is replication supported how about transaction replication and right, can right. known and ht will be a publisher yeah publisher i don't think we support uh, <laughs> at the current point in time yeah. uh, this is uh, again not uh, totally new uh, you, you know feedback we've heard this from other customers yeah. but uh, it depends on what you want to do with the node and edge tables if yeah. you want to replicate them for uh, scale out uh, read for example on an availability group replica uh, that is that supported. is supported but yeah. that's not object level replication yeah. so hadr yeah. and godr is supported yeah but uh, we currently don't support merge replication or transaction yeah. replication yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. however arvind did uh, uh, write a quick test to see if uh, a regular relational database can be a subscriber and if the publisher on the publisher side if that can be a node or a table and that, that. Uh, so the reverse right where you have a regular table I, I see. Uh, I'm sorry. as the publisher but yeah. you can have uh, node tables for example being uh, subscribers yeah uh, that is a bit of an edge case and we are yet to see a customer actually use that yeah. but uh, we believe that it might be useful in certain migration scenarios where you cannot tolerate uh, let's say downtime which is associated with doing the insert and select because that insert and select will mean that you have to quiesce the incoming data workload. So, uh, so yeah, the replication thing uh, has come up. Uh, uh, currently, node and edge tables cannot participate in replication as a publisher. Uh, that is the kind of summary on uh, replication. Right. So at this time, let's switch back. Uh, hopefully, that demo gives you a crisp uh, understanding of what uh, uh, you know how we can use graph and some of the capabilities that uh, it opens up. Uh, there are a lot more capabilities that uh, are um, are possible. So uh, we'll actually look at another demo, and Shreya will walk you through this one, which is a little bit more complex in terms of schema, and uh, therefore in terms of the queries at hand as well. You will see there are more things you can do with it. Yeah, so this is just a car manufacturing pipeline uh, 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 schema that we want to demonstrate uh, quick, uh, quick queries with. And all the circles that you see here are uh, basically nodes in your graph, and all the arrows that you see are edges in your graph. So it's like uh, there, is a, there is a sensor which is monitoring a machine, and then that machine might be reporting a failure and that failure is affecting another machine in the pipeline mm -hmm. and that in turn affects uh, the entire production product. of that factory and the product and everything and there is an operator node too which is monitoring the machine and who works for an, a, a factory mm -hmm. so let's go yeah, back let's and go back uh, to ssms and quickly yep. see uh, how the queries will actually work right. so, so you want to see the tables first yeah uh, so we've created already created the yeah, schema and for all the circles that you saw there, we created uh, node tables, and all the all the arrows that you saw there, we created edge tables um, uh, here. And here's, and here's an example of an edge. Uh, which does not have any attributes, yeah. user-defined as attributes Perfect. to it. So, and like I said, edge may or may not have any user-defined attributes. Sure. Uh, then we go back and uh, try to query this schema. So. In this first query, uh, we are just trying to find all the sensors that are monitoring a machine, which is reporting a failure, and that's affecting another machine in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So if we execute this query, uh, we will, you will see that the, the optic sensor is actually monitoring chasis assembly, which is reporting a failure, and that affects the axle and tire assembly mm -hmm. in the pipeline. So uh, in this match, you will see that uh, we are just 
going from one node to another via an edge in the in the direction of that edge and uh, so the match allows you to do join free pattern matching if you may and um, uh, it's it's very easy to write easy to extend and uh, easy to maintain you know, going forward it's very easy to add any new type of node in your schema or new type of edge in your schema and then you can just extend this query to to do so the second query is just an extension like i said a, just a, an extension of the previous query it's very simple to find out if there is an, a product which is getting affected mm -hmm. uh, in the pipeline because of this erroneous machine and uh, you can just run the if you want to just discuss how uh, would I have done this without graph? It, uh, you know, it would be joins yeah. across all these tables and right. uh, the query will look very complicated. <laughs> and uh, I should have just copied one query with the joins here. Yeah. So and and this show. is actual feedback that we've got from customers wherein they've been very excited that queries which were very complex for them to implement using traditional T-SQL joins uh, have been greatly simplified. And most importantly, the intent behind the query, which is the business logic that you are trying to uh, uh, accomplish, uh, becomes much more readable. So in this simple example, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not just simple, it's actually quite complex. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you can see the value prop behind the match uh, yeah. intrinsic. Yeah. So if you execute, oh, okay, yeah, let's, let's just go to the next one. Yeah, that's okay. sure. So this this is again an extension of the the previous query, and it's it just tries to find the factory which is being affected by this uh, anonymous machine. But the interesting thing that you might want to note here is that the arrows in the match class they mm -hmm. can go in either direction. Like uh, this one. Yeah, like this one, depending on the direction of your edge. So we allow you to go to the same node through two directions and if you had a triangle kind of pattern in your graph then you could just put an and and then write another pattern that you want to match right, here right. or this could also be separated with the help of an and mm -hmm. and uh, you could just come from O to A1 and then and match uh, FA to B right. basically. So, so what's the most common ask on top of this that we've had from customers, right? What what else? Uh, yeah, so there's one more question here in the, from right. the audience also that yeah. uh, uh, how how will you support the uh, arbitrary number of traversals? Right. Because right. here right now you have to specify the entire path that you are traversing. Yeah. Uh, so for that, we are working on that. That's that's a feature that we do not uh, currently support. It's called transitive closure in graph language. And we do not currently support traversing. Like if you want to find out your manager hierarchy in your organization, you don't know how many levels you will have to traverse in the employee table sure. to uh, to reach to the CEO in your, or in your company. So that is a, like you'll have to traverse arbitrary number of times to the employee table to reach to the CEO finally. So uh, that is something that is not currently supported. If you want to do something like that, you have to specify the entire path, or you have to use T-SQL uh, uh, like recursive loops and like, temp yeah. tables to do something like that. Sure. Uh, you could also write recursive CT starting CTP to yeah. Rakdu. Yeah, which because is not uh, uh, recursive yeah. ma using match inside recursive city is currently uh, not supported, but right. uh, we have fixed that and, and CTP tool or tool that will be available. So you will be able to download and use that. Uh, but so I guess the summary for users is we can do more advanced things, uh, uh, but there may be some workarounds required for yes. some of those advanced yes. Uh, yes. Uh, patterns. And so. similarly, there were questions from customers that find if I want to find anything that is connected to me, multiple type of nodes, I don't want to specify yeah. each and every node. Uh, currently, we do not support that functionality either. So if you want to do something like that, you have to specify the nodes that you and want to find. Hopefully, soon we will publish guidance yeah. around uh, these kind of uh, uh, extra query patterns which we may not currently support out of the box but yeah. there are workarounds which we yeah. can uh, share with you as well yes cool so uh, with that uh, let me just open up the power bi thing yeah so there's another question about visualization also yeah. so let's say we want to visualize the results of this query right yeah. so there's currently there's no way in ssms no default built-in way in ssms or any other tool to visualize uh, you will be able to see the results in the form of uh, tabular format that you uh, have already you already know of uh, but uh, there, there are workarounds again for visualization also so uh, power bi uh, you can send you the output of your query to power bi power bi currently uh, has a plugin called force directly you can use that to visualize your your graph or the results from a query in your graph mm -hmm. 
So, so this, is, this is the it's a plugin you download. Uh, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, this is a plugin provided by Microsoft. So you can just go to the Power BI library and uh, download this plugin from there. And uh, uh, so this, this is, is the uh, I, the IoT example that I just showed you. It's a toy example. It's a small graph. So it, these are the nodes and edges from that graph. And um, if you this one? yeah, if this is the this is the output of the first query that we saw that. Uh, Excellent tires. Uh, the chassis assembly had an error, which was affecting excellent tire assembly. And engine assembly also has an error, which is affecting excellent tires. So um, you can you can certainly send the output of your query to uh, view or a table, and then use that table to project this graph in Power BI. Uh, cool. It's a workaround for visualization. And uh, just as another alternative, if you wanted to use uh, in database capabilities to do visualization, uh, one of the other things you could consider is using R. Uh, R comes with some very powerful libraries, including uh, this uh, this library called iGraph. iGraph, among various other things, one of the things it can do is plotting. So uh, th this is an example of uh, how you could use uh, iGraph to plot uh, uh, images if you wanted to. So we have a snapshot of that on the slide, just to kind of show you how um, uh, how that looks. So again, uh, you put all this together in an R script, uh, send it the output of a match clause. So the stuff that you see below is uh, the match clause, and then uh, using iGraph, you can plot a file, uh, plot uh, the visualization as a, a graph. And here is a simple, very very simple but uh, effective visualization of a section of the graph. Uh, so there are multiple options for visualization. Some customers would prefer to do it in their own app using uh, libraries of their choice. So there's plenty of options uh, from an app perspective that you could uh, consider uh, for visualizing the graph. Cool. So uh, with that, uh, I think we are at a logical point where we can continue closing out on questions that we have. Uh, but as a reference, we will send out and uh, uh, David will make available uh, this uh, slide deck. Um, the demo that we showed you in, in the recommendation service example is actually publicly uh, available. Yeah. Uh, source code for that is on GitHub. And uh, we actually wrote a little blog post as well to uh, summarize the overall flow of that example. Uh, Shreya has a couple of uh, uh, blog posts of her own, which uh, you can use as an introductory uh, uh, kind of an overview of the feature and so on. And um, there is a lot of good documentation out there. We're very eager to hear if you have feedback on documentation, uh, you know, how, how, yeah. how else can we improve it? Yeah. And uh, as we said, at a suitable point, once we have, uh, for example, the next CTP release out for SQL 2017, uh, we will be able to publish more examples of a uh, lot more complex queries, like these recursive queries and so on, uh, that we uh, currently are not allowed to do out of the box. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that, uh, we'll just make sure we have answered uh, most of the questions. Yes, yeah, so uh, there is a question, can regular tables be joined in the same query with node or edge tables? So yes, they can be. However, you cannot use match on uh, non-node or edge table. Sure. So a match can only be used on nodes and edges. Uh, and But you can join. You can have an expression yeah, which says can. and or yeah. or. Yeah. So you can join any tables mm -hmm. to any table okay. uh, that is supported. Um, resource usage with new match clause equals join clause way. Uh, yes, yeah. so it will be about same. The query performance will be similar. Yes. I think the good thing is because of things like column store and because of other uh, query processing announcements in 2017, mm -hmm. specifically things like adaptive join and adaptive uh, uh, grants, memory grants and so on. Uh, you may actually see uh, uh, quite robust query processing even with match, uh, though it's being internally transformed to joins. So uh, that's just a side note for uh, those of you who have already looked at adaptive query processing in 2017, uh, we can take advantage of that for free. Uh, can you use Python for visualization? So sure. we have not tried it ourselves, but sure. uh, there's nothing stopping you from that's doing right, that, I guess. Right. So the so. output of an uh, uh, the output of a T SQL query can also be used with SP Execute external script that you saw earlier. Uh, and uh, the good news is again in 2017, this language could be Python, right? Instead of the R that we have here. And then uh, as long as you uh, so that is received as a so-called Panda's data frame within uh, the Python script, and then uh, you could 
uh, use that uh, Pandas data frame to uh, write uh, Python based uh, script, which then proceeds to visualize it. Uh, we don't have an example for that, but that's good idea for us to <laughs> probably add to the, uh, the demo script that we uh, just showed you. A node in HTable is just regular tables under the covers with added columns, or they are totally different things. So, yeah, today you might feel that, that they are just regular tables with added columns, but we use those added columns for optimizations in the queries. So, even today, when you use match, there are certain inbuilt inherent optimizations uh, that you get with uh, uh, with node and edge tables that you will not get with regular tables. Uh, so, that data is used differently in your queries. So. Yeah. They might look regular tables, yeah. but and, they are actually not used as regular. Uh, you know, you could you could look at it in the other sense, which is the fact that they are regular tables. Or in a way, yeah. also is familiarity. Uh, yeah. It helps uh, uh, you know lessen the learning curve to a certain extent. So, any other questions? Which Do you know, approximately when SQL Server 2017 is available. <laughs> All right, uh, that's something which we obviously cannot comment on. Yeah. Uh, so, CTP 2.1 is the publicly available uh, preview release and. Uh, as Freya mentioned, uh, subsequent release will follow soon, uh, which is where you should expect to see more uh, capabilities opening up. And this is available on Linux, yes. Yes. So. Very good. So I think we are like. Um, uh, there are a few more left. questions that I have actually missed, uh, but we will answer with that problem. Sure. Okay. sure. So, David, I, I suppose uh, you know, we can follow up on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, actually, I just have a question also for you that related to some question uh, that uh, someone asked it before. Is uh, if I use SQL Edge right now, uh, do we uh, do we already have the uh, graph support in SQL Edge right now, or is not yet there? Uh, so it's still in private preview on Azure. However, we expect it to be there um, uh, in this month by end of this month probably. It will oh, be that's, out. that's that's great here. So at build, uh, there we was an announce, announcement yeah. made uh, stating that public preview for Azure SQL DB will be available in, uh, in the June time frame. Yeah. So That's perfect. Cool. And uh, I do want to just mention one more thing, David, uh, related to that. Is, uh, uh, the engineering team is very eager to uh, you know, engage with customers directly on early adopter front. So mm -hmm. if, you have, uh, if any of the uh, uh, members in the audience have an interest in this feature, and uh, uh, would like to uh, have a deeper level of engagement wherein we can talk to them about the specific use case and so on. Uh, please reach out to us. Nice. You have our Twitter handles. Uh, and uh, the, it, there's an official way as well to enter the so called preview program or the early uh, uh, adopter program, uh, which is uh, SQL Server V next EAP. Dot Azure websites dot net. Yes. So you can also sign up there and uh, ask for one of us, and yeah. we will be uh, able to kind of help you out. Uh, yeah, I saw that you have the um, the link on your slides, right? Uh, is the yes. one before the last one? Yes. That's it. So early adopter. That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, cool. So I will publish the slides just uh, maybe even already today or at least uh, tomorrow as soon as I have it. And then also the entire uh, uh, screencast will be available on YouTube. So if everyone wants to, you know, uh, just review it and then contact you, they will have all the links and everything available. So perfect. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think we have done. Uh, actually, you did a great job. I was just uh, here and watching and enjoying it. So thank you very much. <laughs> you take care of the of the question of the answer. That's great. Um, well, thank you very much, Dan. It was really, really a pleasure to have you there. I, I'm really, really excited about all this feature. I love how uh, SQL Server is shaping up with all this stuff. Uh, bake it in so just one can switch it on and use it without having to move data around, as you said. So I'm I'm really, really impressed. Thank you. Thank you Perfect. so much, really. Thank you, David, thank you. and thank you all who attended. Uh, yeah. We are very yeah. pleased to see the audience today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Good. Keep in touch. Bye-bye. Yes, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye.